Well, hello, hello everyone, and welcome to a, another episode of the Reiki Lifestyle Podcast. I'm here today with Danny. Danny Good morning, Wendell. everybody. And her and I are actually leading this um, Q and A uh, today. Colleen is teaching, so we are at the helm today. Um, this episode of the podcast is our monthly Q and A. So we are actually live here with um, people that join us from all over the country and all over the world and ask their Reiki questions. Um, and so you can always join live if you would like. We have this at 9 a.m. Pacific um, on Wednesday mornings, like I said, once a month where we, uh, you know, we actually have about 35 people that are here live with us um, this, this time. Um, and so you're welcome to always join us. If you have any Reiki questions, um, we definitely keep it so that if you're not comfortable, you know, being on audio or being on, um, camera that you can come and still ask your Reiki questions. Um, so that, um, you know, so that if you're not comfortable, like doing that, you can still, you can still be here and, and ask your questions. So we have all of those kind of technical things that we talk about before we start the recording with it. Um, so I just don't know if we've ever kind of really said that live, Danny, where, you know, people may be like, oh no, but I don't want to be on camera or I don't want to be on audio. Um, because, you know, I feel a little bit shy about that or not comfortable for whatever reason that it may be. Um, so you can read more about that or learn more about that at our podcast page on ReikiLifestyle.com, um, where you sign up for the newsletter um, and um, we send you the Zoom link and just a little bit more about this episode of the podcast. So um, we do release new episodes every Monday and Thursday. So if you um, are watching this or um, we, we release them on um, YouTube, our YouTube channel, which is ReikiLifestyle.com and on all the podcast platforms. So Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, all of those, all the major ones, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Um, all right. Other announcements is we, this will be released. Let's see, we're in March. Uh, Colleen's heading to Japan to teach um, Reiki Master and Karuna Reiki Master uh, with William on Mount Karama. She's actually leaving at the end of the month and will be there for kind of most of April where they will be um, teaching together at the birthplace of Reiki, Mount Karama. So really amazing. Um, and then I think there's a couple spaces left, but I know we're kind of getting close to the deadline. So, you know, it might be hard to uh, plan a whole trip to Japan in a couple of weeks. But if you are called to that, I think they have a few spots left maybe in the master class, right, Dan? Yeah, in the master class. Um, and then other announcements is that we have, you know, we teach animal Reiki and uh, human Reiki um, about, you know, kind of every other month we teach animal Reiki every other month and then human Reiki every month, every other month. So you can look at our calendar and see any of that uh, at ReikiLifestyle.com. And then one last announcement um, we have our free distance Reiki share every Tuesday morning at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. You do have to sign up um, for a different list for that. And the reason that we need you to sign up is so that we can send you the Zoom link. We can't post it publicly and we do have to change it every time um, for security reasons. So as we know, Zoom bombers are a thing. Um, and so we try to keep it as secure and safe as possible. That is free um, and open to any experience level, any lineage. Um, it's a really great group. We, you know, talk about Reiki topics and give and receive Reiki with each other. Um, so again, that's that's every week at 9:30 a.m. Pacific time. All right, I think I got all of them right. Okay, um, so the format of this is that we. Um, we'll go into a uh, Reiki invocation, which is kind of um, like a Reiki guided meditation where we're calling in the Reiki energy to help support uh, this Q&A and all of us in it. Um, and then we'll get into questions. All right. 
So go ahead and get comfortable. I'm going to turn my video off just because I feel more comfortable when I am doing an invocation. <clears throat> Close your eyes. Take some deep breath. Place your hands in Gasha. Just two hands coming together at your heart. And activate Reiki in between your palms. The light of Reiki flowing through you, up through the bottoms of your feet and down through the top of your head and out through your hands. Any symbols that you may be attuned to flowing through you now. Reiki on. Place your hands comfortably on your body and give yourself Reiki. The light of Reiki is surrounding you. And every breath that you take, the Reiki light flows into you. And on the out breath, you send anything that you're ready to let go of. Any busyness of your day, any place that your energy is scattered. Send it into the light of Reiki. It's to be carried from you and for you. And just allow this time to be for you. Bringing your energy close in around you and within you. Your feet on the ground so that you may feel more centered and grounded. The stability of the earth flowing up through the bottoms of your feet and filling your whole body, your whole being. And the illumined ones are here and present and they stand in a circle around you and fill the space that you're in. Any of the illumined ones that you work with, the ascended masters, angels, the divine animal kingdom. And they send their light into the light. In the light of love, divine compassion and beauty, fill your whole body. And anything that is not of that light, simply flows out on your breath. And your divine spirit, your wholeness, the pure love that is at the core of your being is revealed to you now. You activate the symbols within you and all around you. The power symbol, the power of love, 
that self energy, the key, the life force energy that is at the core of you and the core of everything around you, your power, your truth, your inner truth, your authentic self here and activated so that you hear you, and that you feel that connection to the key in all things around you, the trees and the plants, the animals and the water, You are all one. And the mental emotional symbol, the higher self, the power of the divine mind, that guru that is within you. And within all of us, you hearing your higher self, your intuition, your instincts, and your insights here. Right here, right now, in your physical being, so that you may follow the path that was made for you. Those insights come in in your daily life and it's all right here, right now within you. And the distance symbol that God self that's within, the pure love that's within, the source of consciousness that's within, all housed in a human body, a connection to the divine, your divine spirit, And the Reiki light helps to release the layers that cover that from you, the forgetting of who and what you truly are. So that's activated within you and you remember now. You are the universe. The universe is you. And it's all right here, right now, within. And sometimes it feels like the burdens of this world cover that from you. They hide your true self, your authentic self, your God self, your higher self from you. And so receive the Reiki light. There's nothing that you need to do, but open your heart and receive. As the Reiki light comes in, and lifts some of those layers from you. So that you can see you. You can see that light that's within. You remember it. 
that light that is within. You breathe it all in to a deeper and deeper level. As the ways and worries of the world, this life's injuries, past life's injuries, ancestral history, culturally created beliefs, any cords or connectors. Reiki lifts all of those from you and for you. And it heals them and hears them so that you are heard. Now the Reiki light pours into your heart and it fills all the way down to your feet and out through your earth star and through your hands and out through your hands into your body and up through your crown and up through your soul star. And you are light. You are Reiki. And you feel the enlightened energy flowing and coursing through your whole being. And it feels easy and light just to sit within this for a moment and the energy of peace is here. And that web of consciousness contributing to the high frequencies on the planet, anchoring the high frequencies on the planet just by healing you. just by connecting more and more and deeper and deeper into your remembering and your authentic self. As we heal ourselves, we heal the world. And as we recognize that we are not alone, There is a community of light bringers. And today on World Peace Grid Meditation Day, it's more apparent than, other, than ever that there are so many of us contributing and bringing the light and the higher frequencies onto the planet. The web of all of us here with the common goal of healing ourselves and contributing to the wellness of the world. And how beautiful that is. Even in the duality, we bring more enlightened energy onto the planet. Even when it's for self, that is a great act of love. And so we say thank you to each other 
Our circle is always divinely ordered. And whether you're here now or listening later, we are a part of that web, connected through light and beauty and love. And we say thank you to the teachers and to the ancestors who have come before us and brought us these ways, carried them down for generations. We're so grateful. Thank you. And we say thank you to the descendants and to the students for carrying these forward. We're honored to be in the lineage of light bringers, carrying the light on the planet, being the light on the planet, allowing the Reiki to manifest to an even greater degree. And we say thank you to the Reiki energy and to the illumined ones that are here with us, joining us in our circle and with us always. We're so very grateful. And so now place your hands on your heart space, emboldening the green of your heart space and say thank you to you. You are so very beautiful and amazing and a miracle. You are love and you are loved. Thank you. And so it is. So when you're ready, you can come fully back into your body and back into the room and open your eyes. Hey, usually we would take a little more time to come fully back from that, but I know for the purpose of, of this, we, um, you know, just really kind of come back and sit in the energy as we're talking about all of these Reiki questions. Um, you can, we do have a lot of invocations and meditations and guided journeys that are on both of our podcasts and our YouTube. So if you'd always, if you'd ever like to just spend a lot of time in them, of course, you can pause this if you're listening later, but you can also go and um, uh, just listen to those standalones. So there's a lot of them on our on our channel. Okay. Well, if you're not quite ready to come back, that's okay. You can just let all of this kind of wash over you. But I think we'll go ahead and get started in some questions. So Danny, do you have the list of kind of who's first. Okay. I do. I do. Let's see. Uh, number one. Um, Mary has a question. Okay. Is there a Reiki technique that is similar to shamanic dismemberment? Generally, the purpose is to let go of what holds us back. I'd like to incorporate Reiki into my dismemberments. You know, that's a good question. And I don't know if I, I mean, I know what dismemberment is in shamanic um, practices, um, but I don't know if I'm trained well enough to be fully qualified to answer that question. Um, and so I think that would actually probably be a better question for Colleen um, because she's extensively trained in shamanic practice. That makes sense. And yeah. Taz has a question. She'd like to talk about the um, peace grids. Great. Go ahead, Kaz. Okay, here I am. Um, I've done a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. You know, with the I have the cards and I put them in my hands. Mm -hmm. And I put a whole bunch of symbols in there and hang on to it and just sit with it. But um 
it's it's the um the crystals do the do i need to do that with crystals also yeah so um what Kaz is referring to um is the reiki world peace grids um that were developed by william rand um, and I mentioned it in the invocation. Today is the um, day that there is the Reiki World Peace Meditation. So this is one style of grid. Many people, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and show them that there, Kaz, thank you. Um, this is one style of crystal grid. There are many styles of crystal grids. Many people who work with grids and crystals and even combine them with their, yeah, the anachrona, yep. Um, combine them with their Reiki practices in all sorts of ways, um, in really beautiful ways. So this is one style of grid and one style of grid work. So what Kaz is referring to is the Reiki world peace grid. So I'm going to go ahead and show that. I brought all of mine out. I have like every size. <laughs> so I'm going to show the smallest just because I think that that's probably easiest to get on camera. So this is just um, a postcard size of the grid um, that uh, Kaz is referring to. Um, and so this is actually um, a photo of one of the world peace grids. This is the North Pole one. So William Rand uh, many years ago had six um, peace grids made, um, made out of gold and all sorts of materials to help them to last and he placed them around the world. Um, so he placed one in the North Pole, the um, South Pole, Michigan, the Reiki Center in Michigan, um, Jerusalem, uh, in the old city of Jerusalem, in Hawaii, the Reiki Center in Hawaii. And then the last one was placed in on Mount Kurama in Japan actually last year um during the kind of hundred year when we were doing the hundred year celebration and uh lena takahashi who lives in japan and um is part of healing land reiki her and muni kai who's also healing Re land reiki um were helping with that hundred year ceremony and so they placed the last one in the temples on mount karama um and so um the the point of the intention of the world peace grids, they have an inscription around the center of them. I don't know if that, that'll focus. There it goes. And the um, inscription says, may the followers of all religions and spiritual paths work together to create peace among all people on earth. And in the center, there are also um, little, you know, symbols for each of the um, major religions and spiritual paths. And that actually even includes like atheism and um, uh, alternative is not the right word. It's a different word, but spiritual paths, such as like this kind of spiritual, spiritual path. Um, and then 12 crystals around the outside and then a center um, kind of like generator crystal. So you are able to get those on reiki.org. You can download them and print them yourself. Um, they have them in different sizes. This is just one size. They also have them in kind of like a, a 12 by 12 size so that you can have like a bigger one and a bigger grid. Um, and then place your own crystals around them um, if you feel called. Then once a month, usually it's about the second, third Wednesday of the month, there is called um, what is called World <clears throat> Peace Meditation Day. And so what that is about is that you um, do the World Peace Meditation at 7.30 p.m. in your own local time zone. Um, and so you have, you know, everybody that's doing these meditations um, in their local time zone, that it's kind of this continuous uh, meditation, prayer, intention setting through Reiki that's contributing to world peace kind of continuously for like 24 hours. Um, and so um, that's kind of what, you know, one part of the grids. The other thing though about the grids is you're, you're taught like a specific 
um, thing in the Reiki master class about how to use this crystal grid, how to do grid work kind of in general, um, and that you can use this grid even just outside of that. So you can place, um, you know, in your intentions onto your grid, you can place healing, distance healing for other people so that your grid um, sends healing to others. Um, you know, there's a variety of ways that you can do that. Some people will just write like, here's my intention, or here's the name of a person I'd like to send continuous Reiki to, um, and place their name or that intention on a little piece of paper and send it on, set it on your grid. Um, some people will get like little boxes to put in there as well. Other times you can just have the intention and send like, okay, I'm going to send Reiki to Danny and I'm going to put that in my grid. And so it's, there's, um, you know, there's a lot around this. Um, again, you can very much use your intuition about how you use your grid. Um, what Kaz, Kaz's question specifically is about the crystals that you might have on your grid. Um, and so I'm, I was getting to it, Kaz. <laughs> But I wanted to explain because not everybody knows what the world peace grid is and, and kind of what you're referring to. Um, so um, in the crystals around it, and she's asking, can she just give Reiki to her grid? Does she have to give Reiki to the crystals? Does she have to do both? You know, how does that work? So as you well know, Kaz, Colleen and I's uh, style of Reiki is very much uh, Reiki your way. So, um, and, you know, and somebody else might have a different thought around that, and that's okay. And also about what your intuition and your guidance is calling you to do with your grid, what you have access to. So not everybody has crystals. Um, not everybody has the time to spend in a lot of meditation around it. Um, and sometimes that ebbs and flows as far as, um, you know, sometimes you do have a lot of time to spend in it. Other times you have to do what it's called Reiki on the fly, where you are just kind of, all right, I'm sending my symbol over there, putting it, my grid is normally housed over there on my altar. Um, I'm sending Reiki into my grid and, um, you know, Reiki on, or you can stand over it and charge it. Or as you said, you can place it in between your hands and send Reiki to your grid. That is absolutely a um, very uh, effective way to do it. It is an acceptable way to do it. I don't even mean to say acceptable, but you know what I mean? Like it absolutely is a way that you can do that. You can also put it into your crystals and put that into both. Um, the, another way that you can do that is if you have your grid lying on like your, your desk or your table or your altar, and you have your crystals on top of it, you can put Reiki into both at the same time. So that is another way to do it as well. So, um, you know, in that case, if I'm doing Reiki on the fly or just I'm not going to do the whole grid work piece of it, I would just maybe go over my grid and just charge it. Like, you know, I'm, I've got the symbols, I've got Reiki activated, and I'm just going to put Reiki into the whole thing this way. Other times when I have, you know, maybe more time or feeling more called to go into the longer ritual of it, I may, you know, use my crystals and draw the, the in and out that we learn in the master manual and charge it that way. So um, I'm trying to find what I did with my generator. I know I brought it over here. So you're going to have a generator in the center and your crystals on the outside of it. Um, and you're going to have your kind of master crystal and draw from each crystal into the center, back out and into the center. So it really is what you're feeling guided to, um, what you what you have time for. Um, I'm going to do that. I might do, you know, a, a basic charge kind of every single day. And then I'm going to have my rituals um, in a different way, you know, maybe like once a week or something like that. Um, so that's, again, it's about your guidance. It's about being in relationship with your grids in the way that is right for you. 
and how Reiki works for you as well. Other people may have a different answer to that. Oh, I'm going to be within, I'm going to spend ritual in my grid every single day. And that's how I connect into it. And that's how I feel is the right way for me to um, spend time with my grid and place my intentions into my grid. Go ahead, Danny. Um, you have a question. Can two people in the same household share a grid or is it better to have your own? Oh, good question. I, again, I'm, we're kind of like, I'm kind of casual about <laughs> the grid. So I think you absolutely can share a grid. I know for me personally, I probably would have my own grid in addition to that, um, just because I want my own intentions um, with it. And like, so, um, and I'm just like, oh, that's actually a really good idea. Like we could have a family grid. <laughs> And then, um, cause I know my daughter would love to have a grid. I didn't even think of that before. That's like, that's actually a really good idea. Have a family grid. And then I'm going to, I'm going to personally want my own grid as well. Um, just because I want to have my own practice with it. Like, you know, kind of autonomously from other people, but I don't think it's wrong to have a shared grid. Um, you know, I think that that is, if that's what you're called to then I think that's, um, that's fantastic. Um, but for me personally, I'd probably have my own grid in addition to like a family grid or something or a grid with Luna. So, but that's just a, a personal choice. It, it's not like a right or a wrong. Yeah. All right. Okay, question. another question here. Um, from Candy, what questions do you ask before a Reiki session in the interview process? Yeah, good question. So um, before a Reiki session, um, you know, I always like to do an interview and that's, you know, kind of what um, they're referring to as well. Um, and so, um, you know, kind of getting to know a person or even if it's a regular client, um, I'm, I'm always going to ask, you know, what brought you, what called you to make a session today? So the interview process is going to be um, shorter for some people, longer for others, and that's okay, especially if you're meeting somebody for the first time, you know, sometimes they can even be a little nervous um, around having a session if it's their kind of first ever session. Um, but I always ask, you know, kind of what their intention is for the session. However, not everybody may know that languaging. Um, not everybody may, um, you know, kind of that may not kind of call, you know, bring it out of people. Um, you know, if you're pretty uh, experienced in Reiki or other um, spiritual modalities, asking somebody the intention, um, you know, that's like, a, if somebody asked me the intention, I'd be like, oh yeah, that's an easy thing for me to answer. But if somebody is relatively new to it, uh, the word intention um, may or may not be a comfortable word for them. So that's why anytime I have a new client, um, I am going to, um, I'm going to kind of ask, oh, okay, so why were you called to make a session today? You know, what is going on for you? Um, what are you, um, you know, what are you going through that you are um, making, you know, that you were called to make a session? So that's the kind of first question that I ask people. And that sort of gets them started with things. Also, you have um, a client intake form for new clients. Some people use them for every single session. And sometimes, you know, with the one that is provided in Reiki, the healing touch, um, you can use that. And, you know, that can also ask that question. You can also make your own that people are, um, you know, putting down the reasons for making the session. Um, or add that question to it. But even if I were to do that, I still would ask that question, like kind of the first thing that I ask. Then the other thing is, is that um, I'm going to ask, um, uh, I'm going to actually kind of hear questions based on what they say. So, um, you know, 
trying to drop deeper into the Reiki energy in the interview process so that if there's a question that's somewhat uh, related to um, what they said they were called to the session for, that is going to be another thing that I'm going to do that I may not have a set set of questions that I go into the session with, um, but that there might be other questions that kind of reveal themselves while they're talking. Um, I'm also generally, especially with new clients, um, they may or may not want to talk about deeper levels of, you know, what they're going through and that's okay too. Um, so if there is like a question that I'm like, Hmm, you know, I don't know if this is appropriate. I will always say beforehand, you know, feel very comfortable if there's a question that you don't feel like answering that that's absolutely um, okay. Again, I'm not going into like private details with people or something like that, but um, just always giving them the option and making that piece very, very comfortable for somebody that maybe um, doesn't want to uh, answer a question. And that's absolutely okay too. And then the other two questions that um, all of us ask, I think Danny, you probably asked these questions too, um, is what do you want to let go of? And that's always a question, it, you know, even with regular clients um, for 99% of the time, I am going to ask them that question. Even though they have been called to make um, an appointment with you for you know, maybe whatever they had said beforehand um, as their intention, asking this question can even give them kind of a surprising answer of what comes to the surface. Um, and what their answer will be that they're like, oh, you know, they have to sit a moment and kind of really go into a deeper level because that question isn't just about their intentions. It's also about a deeper level of what they're ready to let go of. Um, and sometimes it can be directly related to the intention that they, that they have. Other times it's a completely surprising answer even to them. So that's a really, really helpful question because it helps them like hear themselves at a deeper level that sets some of that intention and that energy for the session. And in addition to that, I will always ask, what do you want to bring in? So um, that again is another one, okay? Because with Reiki, what Reiki is always doing is that it is it's healing. So it's letting go of the things that the person's ready to let go of. And it's also bringing in. So it's healing and it's bringing in simultaneously, right? So the session is always going to fill them up with Reiki energy, but that also heals things as well. It's letting go of things that um, may be in the way of that filling up, that they are moving more into their authentic self and their empowered self. And so asking the question of what do you want to bring in as well, um, it, it also gets them kind of into that deeper level of um, that listening to them and that empowered self. Um, and so those are always the two questions. Usually I'll go through the whole interview quest, interview process and then I will um, go uh, and then I'll ask those questions kind of towards the end of the interview, also um, when I'm guided to. So the questions also can vary from client to client. So that's the other thing to know that it's always nice to have kind of a template of questions um, that you may ask during the interview process, but then also being open <clears throat> to having a variation depending on the needs of the client. Also the idea that to not be uncomfortable if the interview is short. So that's something that I know, um, like I kind of had to work through of, because some of the interviews can go a little bit longer. They give more information. Um, they're a little more receptive to the talking piece of it. And, um, and so it feels kind of, oh, okay, this feels a little more comfortable. 
where sometimes you'll have clients that, you know, kind of only give you a couple of words um, and that that's okay. So I think that that's kind of where I had to do a little bit of um, work and, and listening work on my part, like active listening work on my part, that I was okay and more comfortable if somebody didn't have a lot of words. And that I just trust that that's right, what's right for them. Um, and I trust that the Reiki energy is going to do all the work that they need, regardless if they have a lot of words to assign to it or not. Um, and um, yeah, really trusting in the session and then the Reiki energy, regardless of kind of my experience of the interview. Um, so Danny, do you have any others that you would like to add? Any questions that you ask? Um, no, I, um, a lot of times I do an oracle card before the interview process with them. And so um, if they're into, into that, and so that kind, sometimes if they don't really know a question to ask, I will I will pull an or, oracle card and it just brings up a subject. And so it's kind of fun. It takes a little pressure off them if, they're, if they don't have a question or if they don't know what they want to release or bring in. So that's kind of a fun thing I do. Oh, that's a great idea. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And it can kind of open them up. I like that. Yeah. And then also, um, Danny said in the chat that sometimes sessions, the interview process and in, in the reverse to what I said about them not having a lot of words, sometimes the interview process is almost the entire session. Um, and that is um, also a part of it and equally valid because sometimes what the Reiki is doing is hearing them. What, what they need the most is to say their words and to have somebody hear their words to be heard and that can be what is the most healing for them so both things um, can happen and so robin yeah. uh, i also uh invite them i have a, a box uh, like a sandbox that you can draw what's manifesting in your body um, and what you would like to release uh, and where it's manifesting in their body and sometimes I ask a color, a texture, um, sometimes a shape for them to kind of get a little bit more awareness around where is it physically manifesting for them in their body also. Well, thanks, Lauren. Yeah, <laughs> great suggestions. Um, that that is, uh, those are all options as well. All right. Okay, I have a question from Monique. She wants to know ways of doing a distance Reiki session. For instance, do you use video? Are you online live? Or do you do it separate and then get in touch with the client? Great question. So there are a multitude of ways to do distance Reiki sessions. Um, so um, you can do all of the above, like you said, everybody's gonna have a different style in the way that you do distance sessions. So one of the things that's kind of happened is that when we, when we used to talk about distance sessions, that would be more of the style of just like, okay, I'm going to do a session for you tomorrow um, at 4 p.m. And you might have a little bit of information about what, you know, they're wanting to work on. And um, they, you know, then again, yeah, you contact them after for anything, any impressions, or, you know, did they have any um, thing that they felt during the session? And, um, you know, there's not actually any communication during, during these sessions. So that's still a very valid way to do a distance Reiki session. Many people do their distance Reiki sessions um, that way. Uh, however, with the rise of the commu of communication options, um, sometimes when we're talking about distance Reiki sessions, um, or not sometimes, like how most so many of us now do distance Reiki sessions has changed dramatically. Um, so. Uh, you you can do, obviously we've had the phone technology for a long time. So many people for many years did 
um, a phone, you know, on the phone where you're talking to the client during the interview process. Um, you may or may not stay on um, audio during the actual Reiki portion. You might just, or put yourself on mute. And then after the session is over, you know, you'd, you'd unmute and talk about any different experiences that, the, that you both had. And so that was a common way to do a discipline session for a long time. <clears throat> But then when FaceTime and now Zoom um, have become so much more accessible and um, everybody can kind of join, uh, most people I should say, can join from their phone and actually see each other on video, um, that has changed the nature of distant sessions. And also it's changed since many, um, many things were written about it, right? So uh, in the manuals, um, in the manuals, like, um, it might say that a distant session is kind of the traditional way where you're just at a certain time. And then maybe you communicate after about impressions. Um, I, it might say in the, that you can do it on the phone too, in there, I'm not recalling right off the top of my head. Um, but now that you can do it on zoom, like that is how I do all of my sessions. I know Colleen does um, a lot of her sessions still on the phone, just so that then people can be really comfortable and they don't have to be um, on on video at all. Um, for me and Danny too, right, Danny, we do ours on Zoom. So where we yeah. actually see each other, yeah. Um, so I do the interview process before where we're both on video, because um, unless somebody's uncomfortable with that, I always give them the option. And that is something that I say in my initial communication with them. Um, this is how I prefer to do a session. If you don't wanna be on video, that's okay too. I completely understand and it's very comfortable, um, but I just prefer to kind of have that connection with somebody where we do get to spend that time on video together. Then during the actual Reiki kind of like traditional Reiki portion of the, the session, we turn our videos off. Um, that way I can be comfortable because I'm going to be like this, you know, um, they can be comfortable. A lot of times they'll lay down on their couch or their bed. And, um, you know, in, in those cases, if they fall asleep, it's just going to be more comfortable if they're off of video. And then the last piece of it will come back on to video. Um, where we're kind of debriefing about anything in the session. At that point, I always do give them the option to just stay in their process and they can, um, you know, uh, just go ahead and, and hang up. Um, at that point, uh, most of the time with my clients, they like to kind of ask questions and talk about it a little bit at the end, but that's different for each practitioner. I know Colleen, it's actually kind of the opposite that most of her clients um, like to just kind of stay in their process and hang up at that point. So there's a variety of ways that you can do distance Reiki. Um, there are still times that I'm going to do a traditional Reiki session. Um, and, um, you know, for whatever reason it's appropriate, maybe somebody's in like a medical facility and has asked for a session and, you know, obviously then like zoom and those kinds of things, um, aren't, um, appropriate, um, and, or not accessible other times, you know, you may just do it on the phone. If somebody doesn't have internet or, you know, doesn't have a cell phone, um, then you can just do it on the phone, um, too. So there's kind of all of the options. I personally, whenever possible, prefer to do it on, on zoom or FaceTime, um, uh, if, if you want. Um, so Danny, I do see that there's a couple of questions in the chat. Yeah, go ahead. Um, let's see. How long do your sessions typically last? How long is the Reiki portion of your session? So this again is going to vary um, with each person. So I gen my sessions are generally from one an, an hour to an hour and a half. Um, my interview process is going to be about 15 minutes. The debriefing is going to be about 15 minutes. And then the Reiki portion is going to be 45 minutes to an hour. Um, so mine are a little bit longer um, than I would say what's average. I do have an hour long session sometimes. Some people that's what they want. 
Um, and, and so that's, I would say I'm kind of out of the norm with that, that most people's sessions are closer to an hour. So their interview process might be a little bit less time. Um, and the debriefing might be a little less time and the Reiki is still going to be around 40 to 45 minutes. So all of it's going to work and work very effectively. Um, it's just a kind of a guidance and a calling to how, um, you know, you would like your practice to be and, um, what works for you. And then also, you know, what you find with the type of clientele that you have, because we all have an ideal client, the practitioner and the client, um, is also, you know, generally speaking, clients are drawn to a certain practitioner for certain reasons. Um, and for me, I find that like, I have a slightly different type of client than Colleen has, or even Danny has. Um, and so it's also kind of what has guided me. Like when I've tried to fit it in the box of, um, oh, okay, my sessions are only going to be an hour long. It just doesn't work for me. <laughs> so, um, and that's okay. It doesn't have to, we get to all be different and have our own guidance. Again, I can do it if somebody, if that's what somebody needs or requests, or somebody doesn't have the time that day or something like that. Like that's, I, it's not that I, I can't, or I don't accommodate people or something like that, or like that the Reiki doesn't work if I'm going a shorter amount of time. Um, but at the same time, I also just have followed my guidance that that is what I feel most comfortable with <clears throat> and, um, that that's what works for me as a practitioner. And I know that the clients that are guided to me, that that's, that's, what's right for them as well. And that's been a process of listening for me. You know, I, I, um, because I know like Danny, your sessions are about an hour and I know Colleen's sessions are about an hour, um, and so, you know, also considering that and listening to why and how their sessions are that amount of time, um, but then also listening to my own guidance and the needs of my clients um, and um, uh, on, on kind of sticking what is appropriate for me and for them as, as clients. And so that's kind of who comes to me are people that um, generally prefer that kind of length of time for uh, a session. And Danny, go ahead and just unmute. You don't have to raise your hand. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm watching you. Oh, okay. Kind of like, yeah, you want to unmute or just unmute um, okay. when you need to. Um, I was just going to mention that um, for Colleen, um, she charges by the hour. So for her, um, sometimes they go way over an hour and she chooses to do that. And so the client just, you know, pays for whatever that time is. So you don't have to really keep it at an hour and, and the client knows that. And then also we have a comment um, from someone here. Distance Reiki my way is to create a container which runs for 24 hours after the completion of the formal session. I love that. Yeah, that's fantastic. Beautiful. Okay. Here. <laughs> yeah. Um, then there was another question about with the um, the session times that um, do you charge them if they uh, talk for most of the session? And uh, yeah, because that's the session. And I just trust that Reiki works the way that it's supposed to for them. I'm still during the interview process, I'm still using my surrogate. I've done my preparations beforehand. If you're listening on audio, I've got my uh, surrogate up in front of the camera. Um, if uh, I'm So I've done my preparations before the session. I've activated Reiki. I've done a little bit of self-Reiki. And during the interview, um, I am sending them Reiki through my surrogate. I'm also doing that always during the whole session. Essentially, I'm, I'm using my surrogate for it. So I know that if what they need the most is to be heard and use their words, that that is what is the highest good for them on that day. And that I'm sending them Reiki through my surrogate and the Reiki is doing the work that they need. The other suggestion around that is that um, Colleen always starts with an invocation. So um, she's always going to start off with leading them through an invocation, and she notices a really big shift and difference in the kind of interview process for both of them. Um, so for her and for the client as well. 
Um, so that's just kind of like a little guided meditation. If that feels intimidating to you, you do not have to do that. Um, you can kind of just go through the, the traditional, but it definitely can shift um, both you and the client. And um, then at that point, because she's definitely talked about how in her sessions too, that even with the invocation, people will talk for the whole session and that's what they needed during it, right? And that the Reiki is still running and the Reiki is still healing and also empowering and filling up. Um, but that's another thing. If you notice that that's something that you want to add to your practice, you can always do that. Um, it can be a short invocation, just like even a quick, you know, fill with the light um, from your feet to your head, from your head to your feet, that kind of thing. We also do have a free download on our website um, that is invocations and uh, guided meditations or prayers and invocations is what it's called. Um, and you're welcome to use those. It also has some steps on how to create your own invocation. You can read those out loud. You can adapt them however you need, take bits and pieces from each one, and you're welcome to use that with your clients too. So um, that's, that's just another thought around, around it. Um, and then, you know, just trust in the, um, the fact that even if they are speaking through the whole thing, that the Reiki is still working and that is the session, that's what they needed the most. Someone was asking how to um, prepare the 24 hour container um, after a session. Mm -hmm. um, and she answered, it is spoken into existence using the distance symbols accordingly at the end of the session. Yeah, I was gonna say, oh, I see you unmuted, M. intention. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry, I am. Um, That's okay. A lot of the, I do everything distance and a lot of the people need extra support. So we have a couple of really good distance symbols and whatever shows up in the session, that additional 24 hour container support. So what it looks like is at the very end, you know, Robin, this container is set um, for the next 24 hours. And then I acknowledge the time it's 1317 at the moment. So it will run for 24 hours. Please be kind to yourself by drinking lots of water um, to help with eliminations and release. And then, um, you know, if you have any questions or need additional support, please kindly feel free to contact me. Um, and sometimes there are some people that, you know, need the container reset. Um, and those people are often on my world peace Reiki grid of which I have multitudes um, and set up around in different places, some with crystals, some without depend and the animal grids that um, that you guys gave me when I became an animal Reiki master. And those are, are set up around um, for utilization. But those people need a lot of support. So that additional 24 hour container gives them grace. Um, and as many of us here are givers and less likely to receive at times, it, it allows us permission to be kind to ourselves and to receive. Yeah. Thanks, Em. That's well, fantastic. Thanks. Yeah. And somebody put in the chat um, that uh, their friends adds the phrase at the end, may this Reiki continue for as long as it's wanted or needed. So it's about intention. Yeah, that's great. Exactly. And that's, and that's perfect because you can have a container go in perpetuity. Um, my Reiki grids, I work on them, whoever's on it or whatever it is, I work on it three times a day for 30 minutes each, uh, just to elevate it based on what I was taught when, um, I was in, uh, my Reiki master course with Colleen, um, and I believe you and with Danny support the way you, I was instructed because 30 minutes is nothing in a 24 hour cycle, three 30 minutes. And 
life is so much more pleasant when de-escalation occurs. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, thanks, Em. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, hi. Um, yeah, I just was wondering, um, I had someone reach out and they wanted me to attune their three and a half year old son. And I wasn't really sure if I would just use the, you know, placement kind of method that we were taught in the master training. And I just was wondering if you had any tips on attuning young children or any, if you could share any experiences, I believe you, your children are attuned. I believe you mentioned before. Um, yes. So great question. Um, there is a variety of, um, uh, like kind of resources, uh, about this around, you know, all around, we've written an article about it. Um, I'll go ahead and share where it's, um, you know, more of, with a three-year-old, it's a little bit different than what the article is written about because they were a little bit older. Um, so the attunement process, of course, is going to be very quick with a three-year-old because um, just frankly, they're not going to be able to sit still <laughs> for a full attunement process. My daughter, Luna, was um, attuned in the womb, um, very... Um, uh, apparent and very guided to do that, um, both Colleen and I, because I was reviewing a Karuna class with her when I was pregnant. But I have kind of waited with her unless I was very, very uh, strongly guided to have, you know, that she would want an attunement or that it was appropriate to have an attunement to wait until she asked. Um, but that's not always how, um, you know, what the guidance is around the um around the attunement and that's okay and i've heard many many stories of people who have um children who have been guided maybe they're kind of able to ask in a way um maybe not but there's that strong guidance about about an attunement <clears throat> um with luna yeah i wanted to wait until she was kind of able to ask for it and i've asked over the years you know do would you be interested in this and then finally it was just actually not too long ago that she said she wanted to have her Reiki attunements and she's six. Um, and, um, and so with older children, cause I see some people asking that in the chat, some of the older children would be able to go through kind of a more traditional attunement process, although you still would want to shorten it for them. Maybe um, some of the older, like, you know, and put in there about 11 and nine year olds um, that they might be able to sit through uh, kind of a, you know, maybe not a full attunement, but that they might be able to sit through um, a more like a kind of a longer attunement. Um, whereas you get the younger that you get, you're going to need to kind of adapt that um, as much as possible for kind of for their age. So, um, you know, how, um, with the article that we wrote about it was really incorporating it into different ways that um, children play or different ways that you can do artwork. And so um, what we would do is, um, is have them, you know, place their hands in gasho. So with this style of attunement, it's going to be kind of the more placement style of attunement. Um, with the Asui attunement, um, you know, you could probably place that into a child in that way um, as well. At three, you know, I think it's always up to the parents, the family's guidance around, around that. Um, but of course, a three-year-old isn't going to sit still um, there. So you're going to have to adapt it for their age. Danny just put in the chat the link to the article we wrote, Reiki Crafts for Kids. It's outside of just the attunement process, um, but it is also includes some of that within it. And um, if you're listening to this only um, or watching later, the link should be in the, the notes um, of the article, but you can also just go to ReikiLifestyle.com, go to our Reiki library, and there's going to be articles in there and different ideas that you can do for um, re incorporating Reiki into the crafts for them. But if you're going to do a placement style of attunement, 
Um, go ahead, Kate. Or did you want me to finish? Unless you had like a review. No, you, you go ahead and finish. And I'll okay. just say something after. Yeah. So if you're going to do a Reiki style of attunement, um, you would have them place their hands in Gosho if possible. With three, it might be a little bit different. And just close their eyes and take a deep breath. You could go through some of the imagery with them um, where you are going to, you know, have them go to maybe a meadow with a three-year-old. It might be a little bit different um, and just have that intention that the Reiki light is coming um, into them and installing in their heart and out through their hands and give them a little bit of time um, in silence with that. And with that intention and, um, you know, the Reiki is an intelligent energy. So it's going to, um, you know, kind of know what to do and where to go. Um, and that, you know, they can imagine that light coming into their heart and maybe even down through the top of their head and then out through their hands. Um, and so at three, they're able to, um, many kids, not all are able to communicate a little bit about like what their experiences are. Um, and at three, you know, it might be a little more challenging to have them sit for that. So you're just going to want to really adapt it for their age and just know that, you know, or maybe they want to play during it and, and that's okay too. Um, if possible, you'd want to have them be able to kind of sit still for it uh, for a little bit, um, but not all kids are going to be able to do that. So if you could have them also um, doing a calm activity that they might be um, doing, I'm, I'm seeing like the large Duplo blo blocks, <laughs> like building the Duplo blocks as they're kind of imagining this um, and imagining the Reiki light coming out um, through their hands. When they start to get a little bit older, like I know with Luna at six, she would be able to kind of sit still and imagine this as she can place her hands kind of on her heart space um, and spend a little bit of time in the Reiki energy. And I'd be able to guide her. I'd be a condensed version of the guidance. Um, and um, I'd be able to guide her a little bit. And, and I know that she'd be able to sit for a few minutes at least and imagine that light kind of igniting within her and coming out through her hands. Um, so I know she'd be able to sit for a little bit for that, but she's very active. So she wouldn't be able to sit for long. And so I would just adapt it according to what um, the child needs, you know, maybe even some of the parents' guidance, your guidance as a practitioner, and then maybe even some different activities that um, the, the kid could do while that to help them kind of be in that um, more meditative, uh, calmer state. Go ahead, Kate. That's great. Thank you so much. I really, th those are some great ideas. Um, the It's a client's son and I've done Reiki for him several times and he's nonverbal. He's diagnosed on the autism spectrum and just gotten so much information that's come through about just even like children with autism and their kind of purpose on the planet for like raising the vibration. It's been really fascinating. And it was just coming through every session that it's going to benefit him to be attuned to Reiki and just for his own, you know, energetic hygiene and things like that. So the mom is really interested in having that done anyway, but I think, yeah. so I haven't gotten, the child isn't obviously asks, he, he isn't asking for it, but I feel like I've been receiving a lot of communication from him intuitively. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's just, she's really wanting it to happen. Absolutely. And in that case, um, that is a very beautiful example of where you would follow the guidance of his mother and your, what you're receiving from Reiki around it. Um, there agreed with you and you know the the children that are are being born raising the vibration of the planet and seeing that a lot in children um with reiki that um, do have autism spectrum disorder 
So, um, and Colleen actually has a really, a few great stories about how her as a practitioner have um, helped, um, has helped with, um, you know, the Reiki has helped with uh, children with autism spectrum disorder. So, um, yeah, so I think that's beautiful and the attunement can very much help. Um, the other thing that it's funny, I meant to bring this in earlier and then I kind of got sidetracked, um, but now definitely hearing it, um, in addition to what I was saying is really bringing in those colors as well. Um, and just, um, you know, imagining the, the colors and it's okay that you don't get a, a yes, but that, that the guidance has helped you. And I do think that Reiki can really support, um, him and his mom too. Um, so I don't know if she's attuned or not, but um, that, you know, even if she's not using it for any purpose other than just support for her and Tim, that it can be really powerful. Yeah, she wants, she really wants to take my next course and anyway, yeah, she's very, very interested in it. So, mm -hmm. so she'll be able to support him too. And then he can kind of have that as well, have some more control himself, like feel like, cause I was getting that he feels I don't know that this was going to help him feel more in control, you know, navigating his everyday life, having being attuned to this frequency. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for all that amazing yeah. information. <laughs> so welcome. Um, yeah, actually. And uh, I think so much of why the Reiki is so helpful because it's an energy that matches their energy, right? It's this frequency of energy that helps because they have a higher frequency energy that just isn't, doesn't exist um, on this planet, you know, other than in the kind of energetic forms um, at this point. And they so much embody that. Um, and, um, and so many people with uh, different neurodiversity, um, you know, different forms of neurodiversity and so I think why the Reiki energy, you just kind of see over and over that it's so helpful because it's like, oh, this is a frequency here that matches mine um, and use it as a, as a, uh, a tool that can be so uh, helpful. So um, yeah, really great question about children. Uh, the other one I do want to mention is that um, Ricky Merrill Friedman is a Reiki master and she wrote Reiki kids. Um, and so it's a little, uh, like manual slash kind of coloring book. There's opportunities for coloring. And, you know, I don't know if in your case that would be, um, you know, appropriate or not, if he, if he colors or not, but, um, it just has more kind of ideas around it. She created a song around it that he might like to listen to, um, in different ways and, um, a Reiki buddy that comes with it. And so she's on Facebook. Um, and so you can kind of check her, her out and all about her Reiki kids, um, information too. So yeah, just use, also use your guidance on it, Kate. It sounds like, you know, you're pretty Reiki by Ricky. Thanks, Danny. Um, sounds like you're pretty experienced as well. And you're hearing the guidance of the Reiki energy and every, situation with children is a little bit different. And so, um, yeah, just following your guidance on it and listening to the Reiki energy and it will, it will show you how, and, um, the different tools and techniques to use around it too. Okay. Thank you so much. And just one last thing. So yeah. it's not, it's, and I know like that the energy follows intention. Um, but so it's not going to be necessary that I use the exact wording from the placement. Like, as you were saying, you can have the intention that he is going to be attuned and you, and kind of use the wording that you gave earlier. Yeah, I would, I would, um, cherry pick the, the wording from the, the attunement. It's not going to be possible to do the wording from the attunement, from the placement because it's long, you know? Right. So, um, I would, I would, um, kind of maybe even use, cause that guided piece of it is not going to, that's not going to, that's just not going to work. Right. So, um, not that it's not going to work, but it's going to be too long for, um, you know, any three-year-old to sit through, unless you found that he's able to sit through like an hour long session, which is possible for some children at that age, but not the majority of them, then maybe you could go through the full placement. Um, but if you know that he's not going to be able to do that, use kind of the words that are towards the end 
um, and maybe just right after that period of silence, um, use those lines that are really that installing, that igniting from the highest heavens of bringing the Reiki down um, into your heart. You know, those, those kind of words, the, the rest of it, while it's important, is more about getting the student to that kind of very, um, that, uh, you know, that place where they're really open to the energy um, cause that's like, you know, kind of how you're, you're the Reiki is getting them deeper and deeper so that then they're, they're really open to it. So just use kind of, um, the, the words and the intentions that are that I, I don't, I don't mean ignited cause that sounds like the ignition, but that are really installing that Reiki energy into them. Okay. If yeah, that, that makes, sounds- does that make sense? Yeah, totally. I do. It's going to be, it's long distance. They, he doesn't live anywhere close to me. Um, and I usually do the sessions fully remote during his nap time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but I guess he can't really do a placement. You'd, I was assuming I was going to go live on zoom with them to do the attunement, but I don't, you couldn't do an attunement when the person like fully remote, could you? The attunement fully remote. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Oh. That's what the entire, um, oh, do you mean like without him on camera or yeah. anything? Yeah, no camera. Cause that's how I do all my sessions with him. And, and I get such clear, like so much information that comes through and he gives information to me to tell his mother because he's nonverbal. And so he just gives a ton of information and that's how I kind of communicate with him. And, uh, so I, uh, yeah, just, just popped into my head now. I didn't even know if that'd be possible to do like the full placement when he's napping fully remote. M just said that she's had success at bed or nap time. So I've never, I've never done that. I think you definitely, Kate can follow your guidance on this. Okay. Yeah. And you asking the question and then hearing that that's a, po- that maybe that's a possibility. Yeah. I think your guidance on this, because it's not like you're attuning him to be a practitioner. So when we're in those those cases, um, that's when we have to follow our guidance and what the Reiki is showing us because the Reiki knows. Um, it would be different if you were attuning somebody to be a practitioner, where in that case, you're gonna make you're gonna need to kind of make sure that they're following the the ritual so that you can set them up for success as a practitioner. But I for me personally, I think that the the Reiki energy is intelligent and really what the attunement is about is about getting us to it and it sounds like while you are in that space with him in at bedtime um that or during nap time that that's where you because you're communicating with his higher self um and if that's the space that that is the most successful and effective then i would follow your guidance and the guidance of Reiki on that. And, you know, worst case scenario, if you get into that space and you're like, yeah, this just doesn't feel right, then you can go on to zoom and do it with him kind of online. Okay. You know, that's great. That's been so helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're so welcome. Great question. We did have a related question about this, um, with, um, you know, doing it, uh, like the whole class versus just an attunement. Um, I think that most children are not going to uh, be able to do a whole course unless they're older. So we had somebody in our animal Reiki class who I think was 10 or 11 and um, I think pretty like sensitive and mature for their age and they were able to go through the entire course. Um, But that I think that there's, you know, around those ages is where you're going to start to have them in a formal course. Um, but I think any younger, it would be an exception. I think it would be pretty hard to, to, you know, sit through like a whole day, let alone two days. Um, so, uh, that would be just in the case where you're going, I see you Kaz one second. Um, that would be the case where you're going to just do, you know, maybe some of the principles, some of the things like we, uh, outlined in the article where maybe you're doing art to explain the different concepts of it, Um, different things like that. Um, But that uh, you're going to have to shorten it by quite a bit and maybe just do an attunement and some of the explaining because it's just for them. So they're using the attunement for them. You're not training them to be practitioners at that age. You're training them to have Reiki for themselves. Um, 
And so at that point, you know, you might want to give them some of the basics, but like with Luna, I wouldn't, I would do the attunement. I do some art to explain some of the concepts that might be helpful for her. Um, but I'm not going to, she's not going to sit through a whole class. So I'm not going to be doing that. So um, I would just, and then when she's older, maybe she will go through a full class, um, but not, not at six. So at that point, it's just going to be the attunement and maybe it's going to be maybe a couple hour process. Go ahead, Cass. You're, you're talking about that little, little girl who she was 13 and she had the little rat or something. Yeah. Were you in that class? Yes. Yeah. She sat on her sofa with the little thing in her in the cage she did everything yeah the, she, she was did even a little younger than 13 i think she was like 11. 11 yeah i'm i yeah. mean like i know we've had, we've had a few that have gone through in those ages but it's also not to expect kids at that age to be able to go through some would be able to yeah. other not and that's okay so you just have to kind of adapt it to each of what the kid is what the kid what uh children are able to do by individuals and kind of appropriate for their age group but like I don't we'll we'll see if at 13 Luna would be able to sit through that I don't know or 11 if she'll be able no, to no she because she's so she passionate. was having a good time <laughs> yeah she was. she was it was amazing yeah so okay well, Danny, are there any other pressing questions here? Well, we have two that are kind of similar. Um, Jimmy asked, how do you attune an animal? And then Kelly said, uh, asked, can my cat give me Reiki? Okay, yeah, good question. So um, attuning animals are something that we learn in the Reiki master course. Um, and actually we had this question that was, emailed in too. That was a similar question about attuning an animal. So um, many people are um, have attuned their animals. So first of all, there's many right ways to do this. Many Reiki masters have felt the guidance from their animals that they want to be attuned to Reiki, um, that they, um, they know that they want to be a Reiki animal. So before this animal Reiki energy came through and came out that um, they, that was already happening. Many of us have experienced that, that they're, they're, they're a Reiki animal. Um, so there's a lot of ways to attune an animal. Um, also, some animals will just sit through attunements and you are guided and you know that they are actually wanting the attunement. Other animals just like to be in the energy. So there is a level of discernment around it and a level of consent. So that's true for giving Reiki to animals always. And it's also true for giving them a, um, an attunement, making sure that we're not in the way of, like, oh, I think either this is what you need, or I think this is what you want, really dropping into that Reiki energy, activating and listening and making sure that the animal actually wants an attunement. Um, so that's the first thing uh, to know. Um, and that the, uh, Jimmy, I think Jimmy took the master class, um, the animal Reiki master class. I think she's an animal Reiki master and that that is, there is a process in there, um, for giving attunements to animals that you can, uh, just go and read. And there's even like a script on how to do it. Um, so there's that piece of it, but if you're not attuned or taken that class, that's okay. You can absolutely attune your animals. It's about following your guidance um, around it and, um, you know, listening to your animal around it and listening to the Reiki energy, maybe even having them sit through or not having them, but they sit through an attunement process in any different ways. Um, animals have less layers than we do. So the attunement process for them is, you know, can be relatively easy if they're wanting it. And so the question about um, can the, your, uh, cat give you Reiki? Absolutely. They're a Reiki animal. They want to do the Reiki. They want to give you Reiki. Um, and they want the Reiki for themselves as maybe um, just like a tool for themselves. You'll see that with animals that have um, kind of maybe a more emotionally demanding job. Um, so they're support animals and they just need that external tool to keep them filling up so that they 
don't reach compassion fatigue um, as much. Um, but yes, absolutely. Animals give us Reiki. We know when we have Reiki cats or dogs or horses or whatever animals that are, um, are Reiki animals. And um, I had one, I had two dogs, one of them liked to receive Reiki, but it was a little bit of, um, you know, neither here nor there with him. And then my other dog loved to receive Reiki. She was a Reiki dog, but she loved to receive Reiki. She loved to give Reiki. Um, she would come up and like, I want Reiki right now. She would lay next to me and I could tell she was giving me Reiki. So um, yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, the other thing is with an animal being tuned, attuned and giving Reiki, you would just never want to promote it as um, like, oh, my animal can give you a session or something like that. That's just the, and I know you're laughing, Kelly, because I know you wouldn't, but it's something that's like the the disclaimer around it. Like, oh, my, my uh, animal is a, a Reiki practitioner and um, they can give you Reiki and here's a Reiki session from my dog, you know? So that's like the big thing that we talk about uh, attuning animals is um, just really dropping into the energy, making sure that that's what they want. Um, and also, you know, not promoting them as a Reiki practitioner. So <laughs> I know it seems, um, yeah, so they can be um, present during sessions. Absolutely. They'll come into the room. That's very common for animals. They either want to also give Reiki, just be a part of the session, be in the room, in the energy. Um, so that's different than saying, oh, and when you come over, my cat's going to give you Reiki. That's different than, then, oh yeah, my cat's here. You may or may not feel them giving you Reiki. You know, they like to be a part of the energy. They like to be a part of the session. That's a lot different than like promoting that you're going to get cat Reiki. So, yeah. Right. On that topic, um, we have a question about animal Reiki. Can I take an animal Reiki masterclass without having human Reiki master? Um, at this point, the animal Reiki master is, um, the human Reiki master is a prerequisite for the animal Reiki master. And the reason for that is that there is so much to learn in the animal Reiki master class. Um, <clears throat> it's a three-day course and every day is very full. So um, without the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Background's not exactly the right word, but without the background of a human Reiki master course, um, it would be too much to teach because you need that reference point um, for the animal Reiki uh, in general, because we talk about regular Reiki a lot and we talk about Reiki master uh, concepts and tools and techniques um, a lot um, in order to, um, and the symbols, yep, yeah, uh, foundation. Thank you. That's the word that that's needed. Uh, yeah. So we talk about it a lot. It's a foundation. There's a learning that like with, the, with the human Reiki master course, I mean, again, those are three full days of, of learning about that, that Reiki energy, the tools and techniques, all of these things that are part of the, the master course, um, that you definitely, it, it's more beneficial to you as a practitioner to come into the course knowing those because there's so much to learn in the animal Reiki master course as well, um, that it would be too much to fit into both. It'd be like a five day long course <laughs> just for the master class. So you'd have to learn, you'd have to have those foundations in order to, um, to have that animal Reiki, um, there, it just be, would be too much. So, so yeah, that is why at this point, um, that it is a, a prerequisite for the animal Reiki master course. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks Danny. There's no time requirement between any of the animal Reiki courses. So if you're a Reiki master, you can take the animal Reiki master even theoretically back to back. Um, and so um, uh, there's, there's not like that six months or any in between the animal Reiki. That's just, there's only time requirement is between human Reiki one and two and human Reiki master, there's a six month waiting period, but animal Reiki, there's not. So you can take them, you know, human Reiki one and two, and the next day you could do uh, animal Reiki one and two if you wanted. 
Um, suggestions of how transitioning from a small private Reiki practice into a larger public Reiki business space. Suggestions on how to transition smoothly and ways of asking the Reiki energy to help me with all these business decisions. Like, should I do a website first? Hmm. Yeah, this is a great, a great question. Um, I would say... First of all, I like how you said ways of asking the Reiki energy to help me with these business decisions. That is first guiding, allowing it to guide, guide you, um, really, you know, going into your practices and Reiki on the fly for this. Um, the, uh, mental emotional symbol is really great for these kinds of practical things um, that are very helpful. Having your intention set, sending Reiki to your intention set. I do like to use the distance symbol as well. So that kind of like my future self kind of comes back to me and helps me to make um, these decisions. I would say that um, the biggest thing with it is that even if you don't know where the end point is, just start. So um, you may not know all of the answers in the right now, you're not going to, but what you can do is you can just start and put one foot in front of the other. Um, so that's like one of the first um, piece of, pieces of advice, because if you try to like, oh, I've got to do this and this and this and this, you could plan forever because there's always more to do. But if you just start, then that is, um, that is like kind of your first step. And I know your question is more about like, you've already started. Um, and so, but it's not any different for when you're trying to expand your business. Um, so that is like, I think probably the best piece of advice. Uh, and actually it's funny, Lauren, because this just came up, um, for me and it has to do the, with the website. Um, cause we need a new website. Our website is really old and outdated and, um, things break all the time and, and, and creating a website of, of that size is a large process. It's a, it's a long process. Um, and it's a large process. And so like, I kind of know what I want, but at the same time, like I've never, like I can a simple website, like I could even do that myself. <laughs> um, but a large website like that, I'm like, well, I don't really know what I'm doing here. I kind of have an idea of what I'm doing. Um, but I don't really know what I'm doing if I'm completely honest <clears throat> and I'm not afraid of it because I'm technologically savvy. And, um, that part is, is fine. Um, but, uh, at the same time, I'm like, okay, there's all these pieces that are going to come through and all of these pieces that I need to do. Um, I see you, Kelly. Um, there's all these pieces that I need to do. And at the same time, if I tried to answer all of those steps that were six months to a year down the road, I wouldn't start because it's too overwhelming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with uh, step one. What do I want from this as far as I can tell? Because there's going to be things that I want down the road or that I know I want that I don't know right now. And so calling in Reiki and just, okay, I'm going to start at step one and it feels uncomfortable that I'm surrendering to the, the process. Um, and, um, that I know that Reiki is going to guide me in the right way, even though I don't have that feeling of control because I don't know what all of my steps are going to be, uh, out in the future. So that is, that is kind of like what I mean by just, just start. And that's true, whether you have, cause I know you have an established business. Um, and I know that it's not just about the website that you're asking, although that's an, a, you know, an example it's about in general, like, how are you expanding? So it's kind of the same idea. Um, cause we have an established Reiki business and yet there are things that come on line that we're like, I don't know, I don't know what the end result is going to be, but I'm going to just start and let the, um, the Reiki guide me. And I know I'm surrendering kind of to the process and just taking my steps one by one. So that's the first thing. Um, oh, okay. Thanks Kelly. That's the first thing specifically around designing a website. 
I would say it's going to come down to how technologically savvy you are. So if that's an area that you struggle with, um, pay somebody. If it's not, then uh, Kelly put in her um, her thing, uh, Wix.com. So um, that's a that's a great site builder. And there's others that are out there. There's um, Squarespace. <laughs> it's like so I get Square and Squarespace mixed up. I found that Wix. Go Daddy. Sorry. Go Daddy. Daddy. Now, yeah. I found that Wix was slightly more user-friendly than Squarespace, but that was just a, a personal thing. That doesn't mean that it's going to be, um, you know, possible, uh, or that doesn't mean that that's true. So that's the, that's the first thing with websites. If you're not technologically savvy at all, and you, you do have a little bit of budget for it, I would try to find somebody that's within your budget to do it. You don't need much. Um, you just, if, you know, you just need like basically kind of like a home page, a contact page, and, you know, maybe you're going to integrate like a scheduler within it, like acuity or schedulicity or, you know, some of those so that people can book directly from your website. Um, and maybe something that integrates people signing up for classes. So, um, so as far as like hiring somebody, you're not going to need a ton of pages, so you can, you know, hopefully stick within your budget with that. When it comes down to that, you also have to balance because I know not everybody has that, that budget. Um, but at the same time, when you're talking about business, sometimes you're losing money by not spending money. So sometimes you do have to, you know, make that decision, invest in it because not having that thing is whether it's a website or other, um, uh, that not having that thing is actually costing you money. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, is that um, you can, you know, have a page on Facebook that does relatively well. I know in your general, your general question, Lauren, I know you already have that and Facebook has a built-in scheduler, things like that. And I think you're asking how to go beyond that. Like you're ready to kind of take the next step. For people that, that haven't, um, you can start with the Facebook page and that's relatively easy. It has a scheduler. You can even take payments through it now, all of that. So if building a website feels very like, oh, I can't do that yet, start with Facebook. But for you, Lauren, I know for your specific business, um, that you are looking to kind of move into the next level. And yes, you do need a website to answer your question directly. Um, if you're going to have a business, people need to be able to find you easily. And if they're going to search on Google for you, um, a website's going to be something that comes up before your Facebook page comes up. Um, and so that is definitely, you need, you need a place where people can contact you. There's a lot of great um, uh, possibility through Canva and some of the other online designers. So if you need a logo created, you need some of your imagery created, you can do that through things like Canva. They have really great templates for it. And that piece is really nice too. So you can find some things so you don't have to create it from scratch right? You can actually go on there and search logos and they're going to have some logos that are, um, you're like, oh, I really like this. And then you can put in like your name and your thing. I think you already have a logo, but um, just for others that are listening to this, that you can, you don't have to re you don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's already out there. So you can just um, use some of that. You know, if you're going to see a logo that somebody else designed, you're like, oh, I like that. You can't directly copy that. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> that's something to know. You need to make, you know, uh, your own version of that, but Canva allows you to do that. So Canva has these commercial use, um, like royalty free type logos that you can change to your own wording and you can use them. So, um, so there's that piece of it. And, um, uh, let me just go back up to your questions. Um, okay. So the other thing is um, really when it comes down to expanding in any way, shape or form is marketing. So that is going to be your, whether you're starting a business 
whether you're expanding a business, you have to do marketing. And the new ways to do marketing is through social media. As a, a marketing guy that I follow was saying, Instagram is the new website. So I know you have to have a website, but you also have to have social media um, and have a presence on social media if you don't have a large established clientele already. So if you're looking to expand, you're looking to um, you know, bring in new clients, um, then you have to you have to do marketing. So that is like one of the um, things that is can it can be a little overwhelming to think about. But the good thing about marketing in the new age is that marketing is about showing your authenticity. So the kind of older ways of marketing used to be everything had to be very polished. Everything had to be very professional. There are certain aspects of business that still have to be, right? Um, you still have to, um, you still have to have, you know, a professional looking website, those kinds of things. You have to have a, a website, like those kinds of things. But it, it, when you're talking about people being drawn to you, they want to see your authenticity. They want to hear your heart message. They want to get to know you and feel like they know you. And I will th say that this is, um, this is something that is new in this day and age. And thank you to kind of the younger millennials and Gen Z for this one, because they are shifting this dynamic. Um, and through social media, they are shifting this dynamic about <clears throat> none of it is about that polished, perfect thing, um, unless you're that's like your brand, right? So, you know, you think about like, for some reason, this is the example that's coming up, but like the Kardashians, every single one of their pictures is photoshopped because they, their brand is having to look a certain way in every single photo. And I don't follow them on social media, but I just know that about them. Outside of that, that's not our brand. Our brand is about being authentic. Our brand is about sharing our truth. Our brand is about bringing other people to share their truth, their healing process, because that's what we're doing as Reiki practitioners and Reiki teachers. Um, we're not, our, the whole point of all of this is to people, to have people um, move into deeper and deeper levels of their own truth. And, and so that's, that's what it's about and showing your authenticity and all of that on social media is a part of that. You have to let people know your offerings. You have to let know, let people know that you're a practitioner and that you offer client or that you offer sessions. You have to, you know, as part of your stuff too. Um, so you got to make those posts as well. You have to let people know when you have classes, you know, things like that, that are a part of that professional piece of it. But your brand is your message. And that is um, a really big piece that shifted in social media um, over, over the years. And it's hard to get used to. It's uncomfortable a little bit, um, especially if you're more of a private person and, and doing that piece of it is a little challenging in general. Um, so that is one of the things about it, but it is one of the things that's also a huge relief that's shifting because I think sometimes the, the thought of the amount of time of making everything super professional and polished and every single piece that we do, it's like, oh, I don't know how to do that. Where do I start? That's like, you know, it feels like, um, can feel really overwhelming. So you can have a mixture of them now. Also, you get to stick to you. So maybe your brand is that it's very professional and very polished and that's okay too. So I don't want to discount that piece of it. But it's also a relief for many of us that it's shifting that we just get to show our authenticity um, to the world. You know, as Danny said, Reiki your way. So yeah, that's what I would say about the expansion is that it really comes down to marketing. Also, you can do local marketing if that's more comfortable for you. So if you're going to build a local audience, um, doing presentations, I know yoga studios, um, doing presentations, different Reiki circles, Reiki shares, um, Reiki, you know, I know people are doing um, things at uh, health food stores, things like that, um, that they're doing, uh, volunteering, as Danny said. So there's a lot of ways to also do local marketing. Again, that's also sharing you and sharing your authenticity and just starting. 
sometimes, you know, when you start a Reiki circle, just for example, you might have only one or two people that um, show up and that's okay. Just keep going and definite of per definiteness of purpose over time is going to create results. So you just stick to it. You, you see your end result. My, my end result is expansion. You set that intention with the Reiki energy and continue to set that intention with the Reiki energy and follow the footsteps, follow your next step, that lighted path that keeps showing up, even if you don't know where that is going at the end. So is that, are there any other questions around that? Thank you, Robin. That was really, really, really um, very, very helpful. Um, and um, the energy is really kind of guiding me. Um, like you said, if I'm not really tech savvy, actually, I do feel actually very, very comfortable um, with the whole kind of Canva piece of it. And, you know, doing that piece of it is something I actually really look forward to doing. So maybe the energy wants to use me to create my own website. And um, I could hear through what you were speaking <laughs> that uh, a couple little nudges to go ahead and take the risk and go ahead and do that. And that might be a piece of the creating and co-creating that the Reiki really wants me to actually be involved in. Yeah, I love that point too, Lauren, that you really enjoy the creating aspect of it and to spend time in that piece of it. You know, if you are able to spend time in the places that light your heart up and maybe, you know, shift the pieces that don't either to someone else or out, um, depending on if you need them or not, um, that, that, that is also true part of the path as well that you get mm -hmm. to, you know, um, that gets to light your heart up as a part of it. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if, if you build it, they will come agreed. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it is. It's one of those things that you just have to keep putting one foot in front of the other. Um, trust the Reiki energy, trust yourself. I mean, there are business practices that you have to do, you know, of course, we all know that. Um, and also, you know, making sure that you understand, you know, your ideal client, who you're wanting to bring in, that can also be very clarifying and very, um, you know, kind of also highlight your path. There's a lot of exercises to know who your ideal client is. You can literally Google it. And that might help also light your path and bring things into your awareness that um, you may or may not want to do. So, you know, it's going to answer some of those from the practical side of things, but also the spiritual side of things on who your ideal client is. So I would suggest doing that also. You might have already done that because like I said, I know you're a, an established business. Um, and then um, uh, also, you know, the spirit of your Reiki practice. What is your, what is your heart intention? Why are you doing what you're doing? What does the Reiki energy have to say about your, um, your, you know, Reiki practice and your business. And that's another piece of it too, that you can spend time in and, and listen to it. And that can also help clarify and define like your next steps. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody. I'm going to just go ahead and open the circle. Thank you for those of you. You can just close your eyes and place your hands in Gosho. Thank you all so much for joining us here either today live or for those who are listening later. Just appreciate you all so much as this is a part of our heart intention um, and that idea that. Reiki is mainstream and can be used for anybody at any stage in their life, including children, and um, that it is just a part of everybody's lifestyle in all the different ways that we may use Reiki. So thank you to the illumined ones and enlightened ones that joined us here, and of course, the Reiki energy. We open the circle now. Thank you. And so it is. Okay. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Just love to you all. 
And uh, yes, hearts to you all. <laughs> all right. Bye now.